In this video, I've got some practical follow along exercises that will increase your modeling skills, this time looking at tips about good topology. This is a follow up to my pawn chess piece tutorial and is aimed more at the beginner to intermediate Blender user. Make sure you have checked out that previous tutorial, which can be found in my Get Good at Blender playlist, link in the description. That playlist has even more challenges and tutorials and watch this space for more difficult chess pieces in the future. And if you like this style of learning with challenges and a methodical approach and are looking to learn Blender fast, then don't miss out on my beginner course bundle. Get three amazing courses still at the incredibly low price of $25 and you'll become a pro in no time. Discount link is in the description. So let's get started with the challenges. So here's the first shape I want you to try and recreate. If you're in any doubt about the most optimal way to make this, then do look at my previous tutorial in the Get Good at Blender playlist. Links in the description along with the reference image if you need it. So pause the video and have a go at that. So the first thing I'm going to do is bring in my reference. There's my Rook reference link in the description. I'll click and drag that in and Alt R and Alt G to remove the rotation and grabbing and RX 90 to move it upright. Into front view with one on my numpad. G then said to move it upwards and let's line it up along the X axis there. And remember you can hold down shift to move in smaller increments. And G then X to move that across and we're in the right position. So the same as last time for the pawn chess piece, link in the description for that video. I'll select my default cube, go into edit mode with tab, just move out the way of the camera. M to merge at center. And remember you can find that in the mesh menu just here, merge. So we've got one single vertex, make sure you're in vertex mode and we can go to front view again and start tracing around our rook. So E to extrude, move it out along the X axis in this case and just trace around. And I'm just going to the extremities. I'll fill in the details a little bit later on. And I'll go up to this point here. Might just move those out a little bit further and then back into the center. And if you want the exact center, Press N on your keyboard, go to item and change the X value to zero. Now we know that's right in the center along with this one. I can then go to my modifiers, add modifier, screw, and it's created the chess piece. I'll click on the merge. So the top and the bottom vertices are merged. And with the normals, I'll turn on the calculate order option. So when I start moving things around, the normals will be facing the right direction. So now I can go to front view and start editing some of these. Remember control shift B is the shortcut and I'll just keep it nice and simple. Use the wheel of your mouse if you want to create extra vertices and I can go through the whole shape, lining it up a little bit more closely. Remember close together will make them sharp and further away will make the edges softer. And I'll leave the top for now. I think that works fairly well. Let's just see what that looks like. And that's all looking good. The next stage then is to try and come up with this shape here at the top. Again, I'd encourage you to have a go, even if you may be unsure about how to produce this. Pause the video and have a go at that. So let's attempt to make that. Now the steps at the moment is on 16. And we can see what that looks like by going to wireframe and let's turn off X-ray. And I could create my crenellations every second loop cut. So two here, two here, and so on. However, for topology's sake later on, it's better to double this to 32. I'll do it in both the viewport and the render, and I'll explain why a little bit later on. And it's a good idea at this point to make a copy of your rook or cube in our case, in case we need it for later on, because we're about to do destructive modeling by applying the modifier. So I'll go back into object mode, shift D to duplicate, and left click. Let's rename these actually rook and rook copy, and I'll hide the copy and go back to our original. Let's go back to solid mode now and apply that modifier. And back into edit mode and it's time to make our crenellations. I'll move in a little bit closer and as I said we've got a number that's divisible by four so we can use a mirror modifier. I always use the auto mirror so if you go out to edit preferences add-ons type in auto there's the auto mirror it comes with blender so just make sure that's ticked and close this down. And now if we go to the edit menu you can see that auto mirror is there and I can Press auto mirror and that will create a mirror along the x-axis and turn clipping on. So you can see the x-axis enabled there, clipping turned on. And I can do this in the y as well. But when you change the y, make sure you change this to the negative. That way this area here will be kept because the positive is actually going away from the camera as you can see from the Cartesian coordinates there. So y selected, negative, auto mirror. And now I'm left with only a quarter and I've got my two mirror modifiers here. I can actually get rid of one and just enable the y-axis on the original, that tidies it up a little bit, but it's not necessary. Okay, so I'll go to face mode and select the top faces and I want to inset those with I on my keyboard. 
it's still keeping my boundary so I can press B for boundary. You can see the controls up the top here and B for boundary is just there. And now when I move it, it will keep the boundary intact and I can come to this point here. I can then select these outside faces here and these ones here and extrude them upwards to the top of my reference. And if I go into object mode, you can see that we've kind of got a chess piece. And if I right click and shade auto smooth, that's the nice simple way of creating a chess piece. However, it's not great, it's overly sharp and we want to create some nice curves and bevels. And for that, I will need to add a subdivision surface modifier. So I'll just right click and go back to shade smooth and add my subdivision surface modifier. So add modifier, subdivision surface, and we can see straight away that we've got a bit of a problem. It's all a bit blobby. Looks good down here though, although I do need to sharpen this edge up. Let's just go into edit mode and select this bottom edge here. Oh, let's go to edge mode in fact, control B to bevel, and I'll create three cuts there. So it's got a nice sharpness to it. And that looks a bit better. And I could do some editing elsewhere, but the main thing we want to focus on is the top here. So back into edit mode. First thing I want to do is actually select these top faces here. So back to face mode and select those and E to extrude them down. So we've got a bit more of a dent down here. I'll just go a little bit further than that. So around there, but somehow we need to sharpen up these edges along here. So we'll need some supporting loops. So I can press control R here, move that up, control R here and move that up. And you can see that we're creating a sharpness to the top. That's great. Incident, if you want those to be level, you can select them both and then scale Z zero and it will level them up. We'll need to have one down here as well. So control R to do a loop cut there, control R to do a loop cut there. And we can do the same here. So scale Z zero, if you want to be precise, you won't really notice it. Now that's fine. We can create one underneath here. That's doing fine as well. We need one on the inside there as well. So let's come around to here, control R, supporting loop there. And in fact, I'll just turn on my on cage so I can see this line. I'll select this one and bevel that. So control B, create a bevel there. And that's looking a bit better. The problem comes when I'm trying to sharpen these areas up here. So if I go back into edit mode, I'll turn off the on cage for now. So you can see what I'm doing more easily. If I press control R, bring this across here and it needs one on the inside. So control R, bring that across there. And we do the same for the other side as well. I just make sure they're roughly in line. So GG to edge slide if you want to adapt that. Now, when I go to object mode, that looks fairly good. Let's turn the subdivision surface modifier up a bit. That's not too bad there, but we've got this line going all the way down our shape. That's because if I go back into edit mode, we've got these loops really close to each other and they act like supporting loops to create a sort of sharp point, which we can see there and there with our two lines. Up the top here, it looks fairly nice and sharp. It's looking pretty good. Although let's go back into edit mode. I do need one across here, control R, and one across here, control R, there we go. And that's even better, but we've still got this horrible line down here. So how do we sort that out? Well, I'll go back into edit mode, zoom in a touch. Somehow I need to retopologize this so it's still in quads, ideally, and get rid of these lines going down the bottom here. Perhaps pause the video here and have a think about how you could go about doing that. Okay, so it's about redirecting the flow. And to do that, I'll use the trusty knife tool, so K for knife tool. And you'll notice with the knife tool, you get a nice knife icon and it snaps to edges and vertices. It prefers vertices and that's why it's got a red outline for our green box, but you can start on edges as well like this, but don't start your cuts in the middle of a face that sometimes doesn't work. So I can go from this vertex to this vertex by left clicking and left clicking here and press enter. So this is the start of redirecting the flow. And by redirecting it this direction, I can probably get rid of this line here. So if I press alt left click now, because it ends at a pole, I can select that whole edge loop across there and press control X to dissolve. Let's get into object mode and see how that's going. That's actually almost cleared it up, but we haven't got quad topology here yet. However, if I select this edge loop here, and again, that goes to a pole, so I can do that quite easily and press control X, I've got rid of that. And it's fairly straightforward and it's tidied it up quite a lot. Back into object mode and we can see that's not looking too bad. Now you might find you need to select this edge loop here and maybe GG to edge slide it across if, if you can still see a bit of a lump down there, but it looks like we're sorting it out quite well. Let's change to the shiny mat cap, this one here. That can help you see if there's any inaccuracies in the mesh and it's looking quite effective and tidy. Go back into edit mode. So your challenge then, if you're following along with me, is to do exactly what I've done here and repeat the same on the other side. Pause the video and have a go at that. Okay, so fairly straightforward. We need to create a cut in here. We don't actually have to use the knife tool, but I'm trying to get you used to it for later episodes of the series. We can actually 
select the vertices, this one and this one, and press J to join. But I use the knife tool all the time for these things, especially when it gets a bit more complicated. So back to edge mode, select this edge loop here, and this one here, control X to dissolve, and let's see how we're getting on. It's looking pretty good. So we've got some fairly nice topology. I could, like I say, edge slide this one across to even that out. That is, of course, creating more of an elongated curve across here. So if I press GG to move that back to somewhere around here, if I select from here all the way down to the bottom, and yes, we haven't got a quad mesh on the bottom, but that doesn't actually matter because this is planar, so flat faces. But I can actually just move these ones and it shouldn't affect that edge too much. So GG to edge slide, and I can move that into the middle and we've still got that proximity loop going across there, close enough to work with this shape. Go into object mode, see how that looks, and that looks pretty good. So you can see the other side where I slid the whole edge along. It's a little bit elongated. So I'll go back into there and I can then choose this one from here to here. Press period key to zoom in on that. GG to edge slide and bring that back over here. And there we go. A nice looking chess piece with some decent topology. Hopefully you came up with something similar. I'll just briefly show you why it's important to have more loop cuts when we're doing the rook and when we apply the modifier. So here you can see I've applied the modifier, I've only got 16 loops this time, so I do my auto mirror, take the top faces, inset them, take those two faces, extrude them out, and the middle faces, and pull those inwards. So I've set up my initial shape, and lastly I add the subdivision surface modifier. Now if I go through and add all my loop cuts or supporting loops in all the different directions, you can see I have the same issue of course with the supporting lines all the way down the shape. So once again, I need to go in and redirect the topology to be able to delete those lines. And at first glance, it looks okay, but there's quite a stretch between these two loops here. When you change the direction like this, big gaps can cause kind of bulges in the shape. And if I go to top view, you can see the shape is very flat across this area, and I'd need to select this edge loop and try and pull it out so it matches up a little bit more with the curve of the shape. And that can be very tricky, and you probably have to do it with a shrink wrap modifier and so forth, so it doesn't really work and you still end up with a bit of a bulge on the corner there. But with more loop cuts and more detail in your mesh, it creates a much better result and you don't get those bulges in the shape. So hopefully you got an okay with that and learned something new. Do keep an eye out for the next in the series and I'll see you next time.